In this video, we will be building a high quality studio condenser microphone. This microphone features a low noise preamp circuit that allows for recordings of extremely quiet sounds. It also provides a smooth and relatively flat frequency response that is not overly bright, unlike other cheap condenser microphones. Its Neumann U47 capsule style provides a great sounding microphone on just about any source, including many string instruments and vocal recordings. We will be building this microphone pretty much from scratch, including making the custom circuit board. So without further ado, let's get started. This project is made possible by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the largest PCB manufacturer in China, and they make it easy for you to order your prototype printed circuit boards for your next DIY project. With their easy to use website, you can upload a Gerber file and get an instant quote. You can choose any color for only $2 with 10 copies of your boards. Check out the link in the description. The first step of building a studio condenser is to find a cheap microphone you can use as a donor body. Luckily, a while back, I did a review on a very cheap Chinese microphone that sounded pretty bad, so I decided to use the body for this project. The microphone originally had a blue color to it, which we thought looked a bit unprofessional, so we decided to give it a fresh paint job. In order to spray paint on top of the current paint, we had to sand down the current color so the bare aluminum body was visible. I used fine sandpaper to do this. When sanding, we occasionally used a wet paper towel with isopropyl alcohol to remove any paint dust that was still on the body. Some tips we would recommend would be to sand in a constant pattern and direction. When finished, inspect for any remaining paint and wipe it down with a paper towel with isopropyl to remove any dust and fingerprints that could prevent the paint from adhering. For the painting process, we used glossy plaque paint. Make sure to tape areas such as the threading and the top of the body to prevent the microphone from humming due to insufficient protection against EMI. Make sure to spray it lightly and cover all the areas to prevent any uneven spots and odd color gradients. The next step is to choose a capsule for the microphone. The capsule is the heart of any microphone and it is perhaps the most important component of any condenser microphone. Good quality capsules can be expensive, but they are essential in providing a nice pleasant sound. I wanted to use a true condenser capsule rather than a back electric technology. Luckily, there is a manufacturer called WGT Center that manufactures high quality, true condenser capsules for a relatively cheap price. I got the K47 capsule which should provide the microphone with a nice tone without sounding overly bright. The next step of this project is the circuit board. All condenser microphones need a circuit to provide power for the capsule and convert the small capacitance changes from the capsule into audio signals. Using Easy EDA, we laid out the components of our schematic. The schematic is based on the open source circuit from AudioImprov.com, which is a modified version of the Octava and Sheps circuit. After laying out the board and ordering them from JLC PCB, it's time to assemble it. We utilize a mix of through-hole and SMD components with tolerances as low as 5% or less. Our resistors, for example, had a 1% tolerance. Soldering should be fairly simple. We use no clean flux for our solder, which didn't require any additional cleaning. If you're using rosin core solder, you will need to clean it with 98% isopropyl. After the board is fully assembled and inspected, it's time to work on the XLR connector. The original microphone had a pretty bad XLR connector with a very poor soldering job. We decided to order a much higher quality XLR connector 
and replace it with the old one. We then solder the three wires according to the three pins on our custom board. Next, we screwed in the mounts provided with a capsule. Using the included M2.5 screws, we mounted the capsule and also provided a lead connection between the back plates of the capsule to the board. After mounting the capsule securely to the holder and the main body of the mic, we carefully feed the two wires of the capsule to the two holes on the body. Then we screwed in the head basket to secure the capsule and protect it while doing the other electrical work. Finally, the two wires of the capsule are soldered to the label pins on our custom board. The last step is to put the newly painted body back on. It should be pretty dried by this point and screwed in the final end cap. And now for the testing. The mic is plugged in into an audio interface and tested for noise and frequency response. We crank the gain all the way up to check for the noise floor of the microphone. We then recorded a voiceover sample to ensure the mic had a nice flat sound without sounding overly bright or harsh. And as you can hear, this microphone sounds pretty good, exactly what it was intended to sound like. And that's it for this tutorial, I hope you enjoy. If you like this tutorial, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to support future projects like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.